Good morning guys, just got out here with my tractor and my coyote behind me. Hope you guys are all doing well. My name's Sandy, this is Sawing with Sandy. Beautiful morning out here in my red pine forest. I'm out here working on a project that I'm hoping to get finished up here. And what that is, is this little shed contraption you see behind me. So this shed that I just put up, it's more or less an addition onto my lumber shed. This is, I guess what I call my lumber shed, this little section here. That's where I put my lumber after I cut it on my sawmill. So I put a little addition off of that off the front and that's going to be the location where my sawmill goes, my new sawmill. And you guys can see it sitting out there. So that's going to make its way in here. I hope to do that today so that I can figure out where I want my log deck. A log deck is that thing over there. That log deck serves that sawmill. I'm going to have another log deck right about here. Obviously, they're uh, not going to have logs loaded on them until these trees come down. But that'll be, uh, that'll be happening before long. I'm going to get the sawmill in here, see where the log deck needs to go, maybe even cut a log so that I can feel it out, see how much space I need. And that way I don't uh, make some mistakes by putting the log deck in the wrong spot. But before we get there, let's tie up a few loose ends. And what we're going to do to start off here is I'm going to cut some material. And I've got these guys left over here. So these are going to go on to the end of these, uh, these pieces of strapping or pieces of wood, as I call them. You guys can see them up there. They run all the way along that, that outside rafter. I'm going to put these in there just to give a little bit of extension on the wood. Because last time around, if you were here, I put the steel roof on this building. I came down to the last section and what happened was I was sort of, I was sort of stuck. I could either bring the steel back a little bit, but what that would do is expose too much wood or I could extend it a little bit and then it would overhang the wood that was already there. I decided to extend it a little bit. And if you guys have a quick look up there, you can see. So I extended it a little bit and that just means I have to build out the supporting wood just a little bit, uh, at least more than I had originally planned. So. That's just because I didn't want to cut the last piece of steel, just in case I go to use this material again someday. Anyways, we're going to put that up there. I am also going to grab a 4x4, which I got right there. And we're going to replace these pieces, these uh, braces here. These are just tacked in temporarily. We're going to replace them with something a little more nice to look at, 4x4. Uh, four four. So that's going to go in there, and that'll go in there. Once that gets into place, I'm going to call it good for now. Then we'll get the sawmill in here. We'll see what has to happen. Right off the bat, I'm already noticing that these stumps are in the way. That one, and especially that one. So we'll see how that plays out. I don't have a stump grinder. I would love to have one, but I do not have one. And I don't plan on digging ditches with my chainsaw today. So we'll uh, figure out a solution and go from there. It's a beautiful life out here. Glad you guys are here to join me. Here we go.
One thing I would suggest you never do, leave boards with nails sticking through, just lying on the ground. May not be you who comes back to the spot. Could be a critter, could be another person. You step on that, that'll ruin your day. Just put some construction adhesive on there. Just gonna put two screws in place to hold it and I'll use nails to secure it. Timing, the battery was dying. Hold on. Okay.
tell you guys, if there's one thing I don't like doing, that's cutting stumps. If I had one tool that I could add to my, uh, you know, selection of tools today, it'd be a stump grinder. This thing is cutting, but it's only a, this is a 435. It's a small saw. It doesn't have a lot of grunt to it. Not to mention, I'm trying my best to avoid the, uh, the duff layer, the dirt, but you just end up hitting it. So I'm going to end up dulling the saw. It's pretty well half dull as it is. And uh, that's the reality of cutting stumps. That's why I don't like it so much. Anyways, here's what I'm going to do because I'm sick of doing this. I'm going to go hook the tractor to this and just see what the winch will do. I don't know. You guys think it's going to pull it? I've cut that main one, this main one, part of this main one. So I'm thinking we just have some on this side. We'll just try to wrangle a chain around this the best we can and hope for the best. Here goes nothing. Well, I can tell you one thing, all it's doing is sliding the tractor back. This thing's got tons of pulling power, but there's uh, really no sense in pulling if the tractor's going to just slide back towards the stump. Many people say the red pines aren't that well rooted. I can tell you one thing, in my experience, they are very well rooted. Most of the trees you see that blow over, they don't blow over with the roots, they snap off. And so that gives me a bit of an indicator that the roots are pretty good. Uh, generally speaking, the roots are pretty deep as well on red pines. and so. You know, this was wishful thinking. I didn't actually think it was gonna pull it out. And uh, this just sort of reaffirmed that. Anyways, back to cutting, I guess. Right, guys well i fought that one for probably the better part of an hour and that was not fun in the least some things you see me doing around here i'm enjoying myself i was not enjoying myself there i thought i'd make it a little bit easier cut about halfway through hook the tractor winch up to it the wallenstein the fx85 pull it and pull the roots right out with everything well that wasn't the case this thing is rooted really really well probably if i had like a 10 foot part of the tree hanging off this this uh, stump here I'd have a lot of leverage maybe I could pull it over but uh, I'm definitely not pulling it over the way it was so we got it out nonetheless as you can see I did a little bit of a happy dance there at the end there's the top of the stump I will not be cutting stumps like that too often because that took a lot of fuel it took a lot of effort took a lot of time my saw was dulled more than once and we barely have finished the job you guys can see we just cut the top off there's still the bottom part so one day hopefully the stars align i end up getting a stump grinder because if you've seen around the channel i've got a heck of a lot of stumps and i hate doing what i just did hard on the saw as i mentioned so let's get back to it but before we do that i'm going to take a break then i'm going to bring the sawmill right into here then we're going to do some measurements see exactly where the log deck's going to go and hopefully we can get that put in before long.
So for those of you with a very keen eye, you're probably noticing that the log stops are on the same side of the sawmill as where the logs will roll off the log deck onto the sawmill. That's not exactly a perfect scenario. What I'd like to have is the log deck, the logs roll across it onto the sawmill. And then if the logs wanna keep rolling, they end up hitting the log stop and not rolling off the sawmill. But that's just sort of how the situation goes at this point. I might change it around a little bit. And one thing that's preventing me from doing that is this log deck. Notice how far it sticks out. If it was shorter, I could probably use something like my ATV and I could probably just drive in the one end, have the tongue of the trailer right out here. And then when I'm ready to go, I just drive out the other end. And what that would do is turn this whole sawmill around. I'd be walking over here, log stops over here, just like I'm used to, which is the case with my other sawmill. But one other thing I wanna point out here, when winter rolls around, the closer I am to the outside, I guess, overhang of the roof, the more likely it is I'm gonna, I'm gonna be walking on snow. If I'm walking in here, this is probably gonna be pretty protected and so I'm not gonna have all that snow to brush away in order to get out here and saw. Just a thought. Another thing is, look at where the sawdust is going. The sawdust in this case, although it's mostly gonna be captured by that bucket, if it gets away from that bucket, it's gonna be falling out here as opposed to falling in here. If you guys can imagine, yeah, the bucket will catch most of it, but if it falls in here, I'm gonna have to pull the sawmill out in order to get the bucket to take it out of here or use a hand rake or something. And that's gonna be just more work. So lots of things to think about, but I think this is a good start. I'm quite happy about it. I'm gonna let that glue dry. You guys saw me put up on the braces and then uh, we'll be back out here before long. I've got some uh, more wood to cut so that we can get our log deck built. And that's gonna go right about here. We'll drop some trees limb them up and do that sort of stuff. So if you guys like this video, make sure you do me that big favor. Give her the old like a -roo. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done so already and see you next time.